Hey, I'm pleased to be joined by Polly Frenchu, um, Academic Dean of Construction Sciences and Business at Dunwoody here in Minneapolis. Um, Polly, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Yeah, so uh, it's an exciting, some exciting things have been happening at Dunwoody. I want to ask you, first of all, we reported fairly recently on a pretty major exterior renovation there at your yeah. facility and I believe it was about a 10 million dollar investment but um, I believe that was recently completed is that right? Yeah I think they're probably just doing a few um, small items but yeah we now have our our windows in so it's been super exciting for for us here. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about that. Uh, how how did that project come about, and are you uh, pleased with how it turned out? <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. Um, a major gift was given for items that necessarily wouldn't have been funded, uh, and so one of the things I think we have all wanted for many years is bigger windows. So uh, in the 70s, they bricked up all the windows for energy efficiency and we now have unbricked all those windows and put new windows in so we actually have some larger windows in so we can actually see the outside world um which is really really lovely uh brightens up the building just makes the classroom seem much larger and more livable i guess than concrete walls so Mm. I think everybody's super happy. They've now put blinds up. So that's helped too, because mm -hmm. with windows, you get lots of sun. So we're not used to the sunlight, I guess. So <laughs> getting some blinds in has been uh, very helpful too. But I yeah. think the, the students came back and were um, very, very surprised. And I think pleased for the most part. So so that building is was built in the 70s? Is that right? No, this this building was built in 1914. Oh, so wow. In the, so it originally had those okay. large windows. Mm -hmm. And then in the 70s, they bricked them all in Got to, for energy efficiency purposes. And then now we've unbricked them and put in energy efficient windows. So, Well, it probably seemed like a good idea at the time, but. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Right in retrospect, it's nice to have that natural light coming in. Yeah, well, it's changing times, right? Different buildings and different times and everything progresses in its own way, so. Yeah, and speaking of changing times and progress, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your path in the construction industry. And I, I understand you spent 15 or 17 years working in the trades you're a master electrician yeah and then tell us about that and how you got into the field and and when you when you got in because at the time i understand you were part of a very small group of women in the program and uh so tell us about that and and kind of what attracted you to this industry um well, I I will be perfectly honest. I went into the trades for the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> End of story. Um, at the time, I was a single parent, and I needed to support my children, and it was a way to earn a living. And so I I went to um, a trade school for about a year and ended up getting into the union. So um, I was a union electrician. Um, back in the 80s, when not many women were in it, um, I was the 11th woman in my local at the time. Uh, we have fortunately have much larger numbers now, but back then there were not that very, there were very few of us in there. Um, didn't see another woman until I was probably a fifth year apprentice at the mm. time. So it was, it was kind of interesting being the one and only a lot of times when I went out on job sites and when I was going through the field, um, but I, you know, enjoyed the trade tremendously. Um, you know, it supported my family. It gave me opportunities that I don't think I otherwise would have had. So I, I don't mind it. You know, it was, it was a good, I've had a really good 
good career over my time. Um, and I, I loved being in the trade. I loved being part of something that would maybe stand the test of time. So I can like drive around town and say, Hey, I worked in that building and I work in that building. And my children growing up probably got really sick and tired of hearing it. <laughs> um, but it was, it just gave you a sense of purpose and a sense of um, just, just a sense of accomplishments that I was able to, you know, go through that and become successful and, and continue into the trade and now being an advocate for that now. So it's, you know, I'm kind of continuing on that path, I guess, in some ways. And just to back up a little bit, you said you were the 11th um, woman in, and this is, we're talking about an industry with 2,500. Yeah, it was about 2,000 to 2,500 at the time of men. Yeah. yeah. So there's, we were less than 1%, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and how, um, how much has it changed since then? I know you're probably seeing more women mm -hmm. get involved oh, yeah. and that's good, but I'm guessing it's still, there's still room for growth. Oh, absolutely. I, I've, I've had conversations um, previous to this saying, you know, we're, women are 50% of the population and yet we are not 50% of the trades. And so my goal as I, you know, am in my position now is really trying to do that outreach and, and make it, make a difference in that. Um, and in those numbers, yes, the numbers have gone up, but have they gone up enough? No, you know, it is, it is such a, a large industry, especially, you know, I'm in the electrical industry, which is very, very varied, very, very large. Um, and the opportunities are just extraordinary, but it, it's trying to get people to think about that as a career option and that it's, um, you know, they can make a decent living at it. You don't have to have a four-year degree to do it. Um, you can make a life. And that's that's always been a big part for me is it it gave me a career that I didn't have prior. Well, and you mentioned that the, the money was a motivating factor, a huge motivating factor. And it certainly is not to knock other lines of work, but you compare it to going into retail or something like that. And it, it's it's a, a, a game changer for people trying to support their family, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I look at now when I started and this will age me quickly, but I started mm -hmm. at like $8 an hour, which mm -hmm. back when I started was a decent, decent wage, you know, and mm -hmm. I topped out in, you know, the mid 20s, to 30 and now they make $50 an hour. I mean, what industry can you go into, you know, with a two year degree or less and get to $50 an hour within a few years? I mean, it, it doesn't exist really. And so, you know, for, and especially for a woman, you know, in the late eighties, early nineties, you know, there, you had retail, it still was not really focused on women getting into these, you know, other types of industries. And so it was, you know, I could go become a teacher. I could go become a retail person. I could become a secretary, you know, I could go become a nurse, you know, but construction was still not very prevalent among, among women. And so, you know, to become, you know, and I, I didn't go into it thinking I was going to make a difference. I didn't go into it to make a difference. You know, I'm not going to lie. I, I went in strictly to support my children. But, you know, it, I'm so happy I went that route because maybe, you know, by someone working with me, maybe that changed a mind mm -hmm. and maybe that's pushing it forward now. I don't know, but I'm doing the best I can to try and move the needle to where it should be. And are you seeing more young women in the classes at Dunwoody? Uh, preparing for a future in the trades and 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 also what kind of feedback are you getting from them what kind of questions do they ask you about hey what what's it like to work in the industry um, I'm curious what what you're hearing from the young women students that you have in your classes well most of our women are going um if, when it's when it is to construction they're going into um, project management so not a lot mm -hmm. of them are going to the trade space 
Um, in fact, we're still struggling on, on trying to get more women into that. Um, but uh, uh, quite a few are still going into the project management end of it. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to manage. And, and trust me, these ladies are just extraordinary. I mean, they really, really are. Um, and they go in with eyes wide open, but they go in with the, the thought process of I belong here and you can't tell me I don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a lot um, stronger women out there that are coming into the industry that aren't afraid of it. Um, but I think overall, a lot of women don't see themselves in construction because there's still that age old, you know, visual of, of what that construction worker is supposed to look like. And mm -hmm. uh, like when I go to high schools, first thing I ask them is, do I look like I'm an electrician? Do I look like I'm a construction worker? You know, you may, you may not see me on this, you know, for this as physical, but I'm like five foot two. <laughs> so I'm, I'm short. And, you know, that's the first thing I ask them. You know, do I look like a construction worker? Because I really don't. Mm -hmm. And that should tell you that anybody can be in this industry. But I think it's, it's this perception that they have still to this day of, you know, I don't know if I can go into that industry because it's, it's still you know, is it set up for us? Yeah. Um, and I think there still needs to be changes to the industry to be welcoming and encouraging to that group as well, you know, that they have the same opportunity. They still have the same opportunity for advancement, um, that they're not limited to just being, you know, X. You know, it, it took me longer to move into a foreman role than I think anybody I went through, you know, the apprenticeship with. You know, mm -hmm. granted, it was still the 90s, early 90s. So it wasn't that, you know, you know, uh, advanced. But I think it's really, you know, getting into that place where you're you're finally feeling like there's there's this pathway. I can go into this industry and I can still continue to move up. And there is no ceiling for anyone that enters it. That you have an equal opportunity for anything that's provided. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Did you, um, when, when you were younger and before you entered the trades, did you ever visualize yourself in that kind of job? And what were your, I guess, career ambitions? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> I was actually a pre-vet med major right out of high school. Hmm. I was going to go into veterinary medicine. Um, and then I ended up uh, getting married really young and having children really young. So I had my first child just after I turned 19. Um, so by the time I was 21, I had two kids. By the time I was 23, I was divorced. Mm. So I had to make a living. Um, and that's what I'd gone back to college for engineering, but didn't want to be poor that long. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to maintain, you know, I had two kids that were relying on me. So it was either, you know, going to the, you know, so I picked the field and I was like, okay, I'm going to go into the trades. That makes sense. Well, electricians, they work most of the time indoors and some of the time outdoors. And it looks like they work all year round. And mm -hmm. you know, it was pre-internet day, so you couldn't sit and do research on it. It was just, you know, okay, I'll just, I'll go into this. That's what I did. So there wasn't a whole lot of forethought into it it wasn't like I went in with this you know higher higher expectations or higher calling it was just you know I was in engineering I enjoyed engineering and I felt like this was a, another pathway I could go so. so you just kind of came up with that on your own or did someone approach you or you just nobody approached me nobody told me anything I I do not come from a blue collar family Mm -hmm. My dad was a chemical engineer. All of my, pretty much most of my family is in finance. So mm -hmm. the trades was, nobody has been in the trades in my family. And so mm -hmm. for me to go into the trades was really kind of off the wall. I had no family in it. I had no background in it, but I just felt like, you know, I always loved doing things with my hands. I always loved taking things apart and putting it back together and seeing how they've worked. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the time to go for the engineering side of things, which is potentially where I may have gone. Mm -hmm. um, but this was the next, you know, next best choice for me, I guess. And I mean, yeah. I 
I'm very happy I did, honestly. Yeah, well, you blew up a lot of stereotypes there with you know, <laughs> the fact that none of your family members were in the trades and that you're, you know, obviously a woman and it just, yeah, good for you for um, just deciding that that's what you wanted to do and, and just going for it. So, um, well, and I think, I think ignorance, ignorance is bliss at that point. I didn't mm-hmm. know what I was getting myself into. Let's put it that mm-hmm. way. So, mm-hmm. Zero expectations. I had no surprises. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, then, and then, can you talk a little bit about your transition from working in the field to teaching, and how did that come about? Um. Yeah. I I was actually um working at the University of Minnesota in their construction department. Um, and it was big. Was it two thousand and four or so? And they were talking about some layoffs at the time. And so I thought, well, I'm going to apply for some other jobs. It looked like the industry was starting to, construction was starting to slow down. And so I thought, well, you know, apply for some different jobs. And my husband is the one that found the teaching job. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you should apply for this. And I was like, they they won't hire me. I've never taught anything. I'm, 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 I'm a tradesperson. That's it. And he's like, no, I think you'd be really, really good at it. And lo and behold, I applied and they offered me the job. And so I started teaching in 04. Um, I started as an instructor. So I, um, I'm actually still teaching on and off. Um, but I kind of worked my way through the ranks of instructor to senior to principal to professor, um, completed some degrees along the way while I was teaching full time. Um, but I started teaching in the commercial wiring lab for the electrical students and just kind of worked my way through all the different parts of the curriculum and taught different parts of it. So um, I can honestly say going, if I was to go back out in industry right now, I'd be one heck of a good electrician because you'll learn a lot teaching it. So, Mm -hmm. um, but it's been really enjoyable. You know, just, it just happened that they were talking layoffs and I figured I'd try something different. So Mm -hmm. I've stuck around here. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm I'm curious what your thoughts are about the local construction market now and what opportunities might be out there for people working in the trades. Do you see uh, a pretty, I don't know, do you see a steady employment uh, opportunities or do you see things slowing down? Or what's kind of your read of what's going on out there? Uh, from what I'm gathering, they're still pretty darn busy. Um, they're still looking for people. They're still desperate for people. You know, there's there's a lot of people that are retiring now from the industry. So you've got this gap. You don't have as many people coming in from like the high school and, you know, that age bracket. So they're they're losing people, from my understanding, faster than they're gaining them back in. Mm-hmm. So they're running into a shortage of people to 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 take care of those jobs that they have now and into the future so they are looking to bring more people in another piece is a lot of the high school kids were told to go to four-year colleges Mm -hmm. for a very long time it was you know the the trades was really downplayed and not looked as a as a good career path and it was more important to go get that four-year education and that's kind of what was pushed for a long time in the high schools it started to change now, it, it seems to be, but they lost a lot of funding for their trades programs. So they don't have it in the schools anymore. So there has been kind of a a larger role through the community organizations trying to fill those gaps and needs of showing kind of, hey, this is what you could be doing. You know, here's some experiences for you. You know, you can you you can go into this class after school or you can, you know be part of this program to kind of experience what that is in the trades, Um, you know, because they did cut a lot of that funding for the the tech ad. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for a very long time, it was just not pushed. So with that happening, you have people retiring, you don't have enough people coming in, obviously you're going to have a shortage of, of people for the industry and you're losing some of that valuable knowledge too, right? Mm -hmm. If, if you've got some, people who are retiring, they're taking with them that, 
you know, core knowledge that they have. And so it's nice to get more people in now so that that knowledge transfer can occur. So you're not losing some of those pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and we're seeing some federal and state investments in infrastructure and things like that. So hopefully that'll create opportunities for oh, yeah. people to work in the industry for the foreseeable future. And uh, Well, there's a lot of investment into green energy. There's a lot of mm -hmm. uh, investment for EV. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, going along the lines of not only just the installation of it, but then you have to talk about the utility side of things that have to meet that need as you have an increase in, you know, electric vehicles and the charging systems, that's going to take more power. So now you have to have that in place. So for the foreseeable future with the infrastructure bills, there's a lot of, of money coming into that sector. And so it's, it's going to continue to grow there's going to continue to be quite a bit of opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so what what can you say about some of the programs you offer at Dunwoody um, in the trade? You mentioned project management. Mm -hmm. uh, and what are some of the other things that people can, uh, I guess, pathways to construction that where people can get their start at Dunwoody? Yeah, so we have we have a um, well in construction we have several different program options. So we have electrical construction and maintenance, which is that electrical electrician pathway, or a maintenance electrician, or power limited, or whatever. There's that pathway. We have the electrical construction design and management. So that's that group of people who are going to go into the office or into the utilities or the engineering firms to help design those projects, which are now coming into being. Um, we have the project management, so we have construction project management, which is the two-year degree program. Um, we have, you know, civil and surveying, and surveying, let me tell you, surveying is a high need right now. Um, average age of a surveyor is 58 degree, or 58 years old, mm. so retirements are happening, and they're, people aren't going into it, people don't, I think, really understand it, so... Mm -hmm. That's another area that there's a huge, huge need um, within the industry. Um, you know, HVAC, another area where there's a huge need in industry. So any of the trades. Um, and then we have some plus two degrees. So kind of what we have is that two-year track. But then um, they have the option in the, to go in the evenings and get a bachelor degree. So we have construction management. Um, we have applied management. And then we also have... Um, power and construction engineering technology, which is our newest one. And that's feeding into that utility industry um, to help manage some of those EV and some of the utility changes that are gonna be forthcoming into the future. So um, we really try and meet the needs of our industry. We are very closely aligned with our industry people. Um, we have our program advisories. Um, they play a part in what kind of programs we're offering, what kind of courses we should have. Um, and we manage to keep those ties very close because, you know, our job is to, you know, educate the next generation to go in and, and take those leadership roles. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. where, we, where we're at. Um, we also have some programs called um, Pathways to Careers, which is for juniors and seniors in high school. So it provides them those scholarship opportunities to go to school and um, going into some of those technical careers. Um, so it's a different option. And then we have women in technical careers, which is um, women going into non-traditional fields. So it's providing them some scholarship dollars to help them cover the cost of school and encouraging those women to go into um, other areas that they perhaps necessarily wouldn't go through. So like our, our um, project management, we have a number of young women that are going into that, which is Fabulous to see, honestly. They're going to make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, watching some of them graduate and move on, it's really fun. Absolutely. And tell us about your, uh, do you have um, industry partners that you work with too, as far as sort of training and shaping the workforce of the future? Yes, we do. So we, we are in contact with a lot of the different contractors um, around town. Um, both large and small. We really try and um, keep those um, relationships 
uh, up as, as much as possible. You know, they come into our classrooms, they do tours for our students, they serve on our um, program, program advisory committees. So they're kind of keeping an eye on what we're teaching, you know, give us feedback on our curriculum, um, help us, you know, they'll come to our presentations, give feedback to our students, so they are heavily involved with our students um, and that helps them to get those jobs after school. Um, you know, we have a number of um, contractors that come in to our career fairs. And so we'll have, you know, I think they have currently, we have a career fair coming up and it's about 200 um, companies coming in, which is kind of unheard of for a career fair. Um, but we have them come in, you know, and we have our students get prepped for those, you know, meet and greets. So they learn how to network, learn how to shake a hand, learn how to have a resume, you know, so that they're ready and uh, available for those, you know, opportunities that may arise. Mm -hmm. We also have, um, you know, speakers that come in. So we have like lunch and learn sessions. So every month, our construction management student group hosts lunch and learn. So they have them come in and talk with a group of students and kind of give them the lay of the land of what's going on in industry. So from the moment they set foot at the college, that's a huge part of their um, experience is, you know, having that contact with the industry and, and learning about what it is up front. Um, so they have a really good idea of what sort of pathway they want to take. Wonderful. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of good things going on there, Polly, and uh, good luck with that. Any Anything else that you'd like to touch on before I let you go? Uh, just, you know, tell people to come on down and visit us. It's it's a, We're right outside of downtown, and I'm sure mm -hmm. there's probably thousands of people that drive by the school every day and have never been or set foot into it, and they might be amazed at what they'll find. Um, you know, construction is one of many areas at the college so it's you know it's it's a fun place it's very busy right now let me tell you we're we're in week four i think of the the school year and it's buzzing around the halls so it's been really fun seeing the students come back on campus yeah good deal well thank you again polly good to see you and uh take care and uh hopefully we'll chat again soon thank you brian you have a good day you too